welcome to Chris Park in Shooting Sports. Now, you know, I'm not a huge fan of doing ultra formulate reviews and basically just reading out the spec sheet of a rifle. So I thought I'd do something a little bit more, more interesting with this. Now, this is an FX Crown Mark II Continuum. I've done a huge review on the Mark II Crown before, both in sub-12 format and in FAC format in both 22 and 30 calibre. So I'll put a link to that up above somewhere here and you'll be able to see that and read it in depth, watch it in depth and see what I did with that one. What I thought I would do with this one is I was going to experiment a little bit because I was sent two barrels with this one both in the same calibre, they're both 2.2, but I've got one at 400mm and one at 700mm, so here you can see the, uh, the the two of them together, we've got the 400 and the 700, um, both are shrouded obviously, we'll show you those in the course of the video. But essentially, what I wanted to see, and of course everybody likes to tune FX rifles, play with pressures, hammer springs, things like that, but what I really wanted to do was get a good tune with one projectile, so I did that with my very favourite JSB 18.13 pellet, um, and then I want to just directly swap between the barrels without changing anything else on camera, it was all as one take, basically swap the barrel. So what I did was I ran the 400mm barrel with the pellet, then I swapped to the 700mm barrel with the pellet, both on the um, pellet port, which you can see is either one way up or the other way up, and then I swapped the um, 700mm barrel the other way up, so I had the 700mm with the slug port, ran a 22 grain FX slug to see what that would do for velocity, then I swapped back and put the 400mm barrel back in with the slug port aligned so I could run that with a 22 grain, because I wanted to see what the energy difference was, what the velocity difference was, with no other factor changed other than the barrel, and I did it for two different pellet types. Now you'll see on the video, I used the 3mm Allen keys, the two screws here, and the same on the other side here. You remove those, swap the barrels, put them in, put that, nip them up. Um, they do lose zero a little bit, and you'll see one of the targets that, uh, you know, you can see how it moves a little bit, one between the two, but that's the simple effect of the barrel as well as the fitting, and like any rifle, I think really, if you are changing a barrel, I would always double check zero. FX supply a moderator with the rifle and I used that with both barrels and I did a comparative audio reading on that to tell you how many decibels it's producing for sound level and there's a slight drop with the longer barrel. And yes, overall the longer barrel is more efficient but we'll see some of the data with that so let's watch some of the video.
Right, it's important to mention that there is obviously quite a big zero shift between projectiles and also barrel length. So what I did, the first hole take I just did, um, basically random shooting at 70 meters with a big spot on a big target. And you can see four groups on the target, but they weren't particularly well aimed or timed. I just wanted to bang, 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 get the rounds down, make sure I got all the velocity readings with the FX chronograph, which would generate obviously ballistic coefficient and energy as well, without worrying too much about aiming. This board's out at 75 meters, and you can see, just a speck of mud on there, you can see the aiming point versus the different impact points, different speeds, different barrel harmonic, effectively. I'm going to re-zero it now, though, and shoot some proper groups. But that's quite interesting at 75 meters, the spread on that. That's, this is my hand there, that's a two-inch spot. But then what I did is I took a bit more time and I did some groups using the two barrels and the two different projectile types. Now, these were precise aim groups at 50 meters, but what I didn't do is I didn't retune the rifle. I just left it on my maximum settings, high on here, 23 at the back end, because that is what I wanted to do. I didn't really want to change any other variables, just to see, you know, because not many shooters, well, not all shooters are going to tune their gun to the extent that some will. Some want to just get the gun and shoot it, and I think the Continuum is a great gun for being a hunting rifle. I mean, you can see we've got some, some muddy marks on here and what so forth, because it's the synthetic stock, it's quite light, it's not too noisy in use, and it's also got a soft touch finish, and it's warm to the touch when you're out hunting when it's cold. The laminate is very, very nice, but it's a bit heavier and it's also going to mark if you get it bumped or scratched. And you might cry over that if you want, you know, a safe queen. Some people just want a tough rifle for hunting. This is where I do like the, the continuum. Just to give you an idea of the trigger on it, it's a two-stage trigger and I will do a safe dry fire on this with the trigger gauge. And you can see what we're doing with the trigger here. I'll just set this up and running. In grams ready and here we go this is a safe dry fire pull through the first stage steady on the second stage 531 grams which is one pound 2.7 ounces so it's a light it's a crisp trigger it's easy to use you can adjust it if you want to and fx do have instructions for that filling up now some people are going to want to know what pressures i was running at so you can see those here on both the fill gauge now I'm running just short of 100 bar on the regulator. The carbon fiber bottle is 480 cc's, that's a 250 bar fill on that. Now depending on your tune and your power and what sort of caliber you're using for your barrel, you will get differing shot counts. In this one, I tended to cap it at about 90 or 100 shots just because it was easy to remember and I didn't get carried away shooting too many with some errant projectiles thinking what's going wrong here and then realizing it's because I was running out of air. So that's why I just tended to go with a nice even round 100 shots. Two-stage trigger super adjustable. I have in the past played a little bit around with the adjuster here, but again, today we ran everything on high and high and I ran it all with a DS scope on top because I was actually, when I had a little bit more time, when it wasn't raining, able to set up different zero profiles for the two different barrels. And with this off, we can see the gun a little bit more easily. And here you can see there's the two Allen screws there to take the barrel off from either side. And that just allows the barrel to slot out. You can see me doing the barrel changes on camera, but I'll just show you another one here. And it's literally this quick and simple to do it. I would recommend if you want to uh, repeat zero position to use a torque wrench for this. But I suspect after people have done this sort of primary testing, decided what setup they want to use, they're probably going to leave it well alone. So undo those and it slots out. And of course, we've got the two different transfer ports for the slug or for the pellet. And in this gun, whichever transfer port is facing down is the one which is active. So that will slide in there. We've got a couple of O-rings to seal pressure. Pop it in, rotate it slightly, click, and it clunks into position. And you can see me do this on camera. Just nip them back in. And as I said, a torque wrench will give you greater consistency with this. But once you've chosen it, it's not really a huge problem to keep up to it. The rifle is side lever cocking and I will attach the preview video on this which shows you all about the magazine system. But essentially, like most FX, you take the lid off there, you preload the magazine, put the top back on once you've filled it up. Oops. That clicks into position, 
that slots in there and every time you're back and forward it reloads a new pellet that rotates its position it will lock open on the last round but i'm not going to load it now because i don't want to dry fire it in the armory with a pellet in it this is a safe dry fire and there we go the gun is very quiet with the moderator on it i actually thought it was a very good moderator i've used some sac moderators before but fx zone is actually equivalent to or slightly better than in my opinion so i'm very happy with that you can see it's on a bipod i use the saber tactical bipod mount here which clamps onto the bottle adds a teeny tiny little bit of weight but the gun itself is quite light and i'm just going to weigh that now so i'll pop the bipod off and grab the scales. So with a 400 millimeter barrel, that's 2,789 grams. You can probably take off about 50, 60 grams for that Sabre Tactical mount. Overall length of this one with the 400 millimeter barrel is 34 and a quarter inches, which is about 870 millimeters. Of course, if you add a 700 millimeter barrel, that's gonna add 300 millimeters overall to that total, and you're gonna get that as your output reading. Length of pull on this rifle is nice and generous. It's nearly 14 and a half inches, which is about 365 millimeters. So it's a good size rifle for a larger shooter because you get a nice position on it. You've also got an adjustable recoil pad which will move up and down vertically. And the cheek piece is quite slim, which means that your face can fit onto it rather than having to roll too far over it. And I like that because you get good alignment with it. The thumb hole stock is ambidextrous. I like that in an air rifle because I can shoot it from either side, but the magazine goes in on the right and the lever is staying on the right. Looking at the output figures, using the 18.13 grain pellet with a short barrel, you get 882 feet per second, which is 31.3 foot pounds. Transferring to the longer barrel, you get 974 feet per second, which is 37.2 foot pounds. That 75% increase in barrel length gives you a 10% velocity increase and an 18% muzzle energy increase. Looking at the heavier 22 grain slug, the short barrel gives 775 feet per second, which is 29 foot pounds. Swapping to the longer barrel is 877 feet per second, which is 36.6 foot pound. Again, that 75% increase in barrel length translates to a 13% velocity increase and a 26% muzzle energy increase. Right, well I'll put this back together now. I hope you've enjoyed watching that little review and finding out some of the interesting details about what a going to a longer barrel does for you. Now generally, if you're using a 12 foot pound air rifle and having a long barrel with it, you're limited to power, but what it does mean is that the longer barrel is giving you more efficiency with the air you're using. So you would then get a larger shot count from your bottle. In an FAC rifle, that means you can get more velocity from the same amount of air. So your shot count might stay consistent, but you can get more energy from your rifle. But there are limits to that and how fast do you really need to run a pellet or slug. 950 to 975 feet per second seems about the most consistent to me. Some people may want to run them faster if they choose to say they've got more power. But again, it's all about the efficiency. But I do like the concept of the longer barrel for target use. Conversely, if you're talking about a hunting rifle, I really do like the 400 millimeter barrel in this continuum. And I think the continuum to me is perhaps the perfect hunting air rifle from FX. So I would personally stay with this. Yes, I'm not getting quite as much energy, but I could change the tune if I wanted to and get more energy. I would just have to add a little bit more pressure on the regulator. But that again is gonna reduce my shot count slightly. But I think we're all in a world now where we realize if we're gonna use high powered air rifles, it's not just a case of putting more ammunition in your pocket. You do need to make sure you've got either your extra bottle in your vehicle or a compressor with you to make sure you can keep up to your air requirements. I'm just gonna move the gun to one side and just have a look at one of the barrels for you. Now this is a smooth twist barrel liner and you can see we've got the spacers on here and there are three spacers that go on it. Now you can see on the liner here, this is an FX STX superior liner and it's a one in 24 inch twist rate. Now the impressed internal rifling can be seen 
on these external grooves here. I'm not sure how well that will pick up on the camera, but it does give you all the details. And of course, FX do offer liners in all sorts of different specifications, depending on barrel lengths and whether you want to shoot pellets or slugs or heavy slugs. So that's another thing you can experiment with if it's something that suits you and your tuning desires. I'm just gonna pop this back in here now to show you how it goes back together. That slots in there. You need to make sure these are well aligned and clean. A tiny little bit of grease on these O-rings does help them slot together. And once you get the first one in, they'll all slide down quite smoothly. Pop that into position and that screws up there. When it's in the rifle, it's easy to get it nipped a little bit tighter. And of course, you've got your external thread here for the sound moderator. And as I showed you before, depending on which way up you put the actual barrel, you've got the port for pellets or the port for slugs. And in this rifle, the Crown 2, it wants to be port down for the one you choose. Right, well I hope you've enjoyed watching that review. Please like, subscribe, comment, click the notification bell and don't forget to go through to the end of the video and click on the link for 2024 British Shooting Show tickets. Hopefully we'll see you there at Sportsman Gun Centre stand between the 23rd and 25th of February 2024. Thank you for watching, bye for now. Little addendum now, now this is back together with its 400 millimeter barrel on, the bipod on and the scope back on it, I'm reminded by just how handy and convenient this rifle is to use and enjoyable it is to shoot. And for me, dare I say this, this is my favorite FX of them all so far. It's not to say that there are others that I don't like, just I like this one that little bit more, it just suits my needs. So there we go, happy days, see you later.